everybody, it's yeah. Deck Tech time, and I've got Piotr Golgowski here, MPL member and streamer under the handle Candacer, and we're playing Hogak this weekend, which no bridge from below anymore. Still good enough? Certainly, yes. I, I'm actually not entirely sure if the deck is any worse than it was before, given that uh, the ban forced it to adapt uh, in a way that might have made it contextually better for the format, so that's pretty spooky. Yeah, <laughs> spooky is the right word for it, especially when we come to these first creatures that you're playing your deck. Let's take a look at your zombies, Carrion Feeder, Grave Crawler, and Stitcher Supplier. Tell me why these are important in the deck. Well, so basically this deck is a graveyard aggro deck and uh, it's built in its entirety around the cards uh, Hoga, Karish and Necropolis and uh, to lesser extent Vengevine. And uh, to do that you need uh, to, we'll get later to Hoga, but uh, if you are familiar with the card you need to have cheap uh, black or green creatures to help you convoke it since you cannot pay any mana for it. Uh, those zombies serve uh, those roll well. Stitcher Supplier is the best uh, enabler in the deck, very good uh, at milling card, putting cards into your, into your graveyard where you can uh, utilize them better than if they were in your hand. Uh, Grave Crawl is one of the cards that's just a wonder for Vengevine and also a, a card that's active from your graveyard, so it's valuable to mill it off with Stitcher Supplier. Current Feeder is an aggressive creature that uh, synergizes well with the other recursive creatures in the deck. Let's take a look at some more ways to put stuff into your graveyard. Of course, Faithless Looting, everybody's favorite way to do that in Modern, Insolent Neonate, and Lightning Axe, also removal that fills your yard. Yes, yes. We have some more options. As I said, some of the cards are better off in your graveyard than they are in your hand, so you're looking to mill them over because, of course, you would rather not hardcast Bloodgast, you would rather put it into your graveyard than play a land to bring it back for zero mana, same with Vengevine. So you're obviously using Faithless uh, Looting for that, uh, a card that's uh, not a stranger to the modern format, one of the arguably most uh, powerful cards in there. Uh, Insult Neonate, very much worse than the looting itself, but uh, it also helps uh, synergize with your bench vines and uh, the rest of the deck, uh, Lightning Axe, an excellent way to fit a little bit of interaction, a little bit into, uh, of removal into your deck that uh, otherwise would be just uh, a glass cannon, somewhat of a glass cannon, aggressively, aggressive strategy that doesn't interact with your opponent. With a few lightning axes you have a split card that both enables your strategy, strategy further and uh, allows you to stop your opponent from, do, from uh, doing what they are planning to do. Let's take a look at some of your two mana cards here because this is, you talked a little bit about the innovation that was forced upon you by having Bridge from Below not having access to that. So let's take a look at the next slide here because we've got Bloodgast, Golgari Thug, and I'm talking about Seder Wayfinder here. Yeah, so previously, the previous iteration of the deck that ended up getting Bridge from Below banned was uh, obviously based around the Bridge from Below itself and uh, Altar of Dementia. That allowed you to uh, basically mill your opponent's deck as soon as you assembled uh, like Altar, Bridge from Below, and Hoga Karish and Necropolis in some combination. It allows you to mill your opponent over and uh, just win this way, which is a very strong uh, thing. You get in access to other avenue of attack. With that, with Bridge from Below gone, Altar is not as good uh, of an enabler as it was, uh, so I turn to Sutter Wayfinder, which uh, is just another cheap creature that uh, mills cards over from your library to your graveyard, gives you another body to help you convoke out uh, Hogak, helps you uh, trigger Venge Vines, and in general is uh, pretty good. It also synergizes pretty subtly in some nice ways with the deck. For example, getting the extra lands uh, helps with, if you are going to cast a faithless looting later on because you just gain access to more cards this way. Um, Bloodgast is an excellent uh, threat to bring from your graveyard. Also a card that can convoke, convoke uh, Hogak out and uh, as I said, you want a certain density of those uh, cards that are active from your graveyard if you are just uh, milling over cards from your library to your graveyard. Uh, Golgari Thug is uh, a, somewhat of a replacement for Bridge from Below. You don't want to be too low on the gra graveyard active cards, so Golgari Thug serves the like, intermediate role of being both like an extra enabler, letting you have more busted draws and then uh, uh, being a card that uh, does something when you mill it over uh, turned out to be better than other options that I tested in a uh, similar vein like Prize Amalgam, so I stuck with that. 
Let's take a look at the payoffs from the deck here. Of course, Hogak, Arisen, Necro Necropolis, still a four of, and Vengevine. Both of these hit, and they hit really hard. How soon can we expect to have these creatures on the battlefield? Well, somewhat uh, consistently, it is very possible to produce a Hogak uh, accompanied by a Vengevine. Uh, you can get pretty dig, in, dig uh, you can dig pretty deep into your deck, like depending on your draws, uh, some of the best draws include a Citrus Supplier uh, into, for example, Carrion Feeder, sacrificing the Citrus Supplier, you mill some Blood Gas, you play your land, you get your Blood Gas, you get to play another creature, trigger a bench find, then you get to convoke three of your creatures to get a Hogak from your graveyard. You're hitting your opponent for four damage if you did, if you did that. Uh, and then you also are threatening uh, like from 12 to even 16 damage next turn easily, which can, uh, well, just kills people. It's, it's just spooky, 20. as you said. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at some of your lands here quickly. Gemstone Mine, tell me the role this plays in the deck. It's a painless land that taps for all three colors of your mana. This deck is a low land count deck that uh, uh, doesn't want to Run, like you don't want to run too many lands. Uh, fetch lands are very good in this deck to fill your graveyard, uh, to delve away with Hogak and to trigger blood gas. But uh, it also cost life points, and there's some like balance to be found here. I tend to stay on the side of. Given that this deck now needs to race quite a bit more, quite a bit more than it needed to before the ban, I like having uh, a few more painless land in the, uh, lands in the deck. Let's take a look finally at some of your last lands. Anything you want to call out here? Well, just the regular mana base, the Black Deck Cliffs, another painless land. I tried to fit as many as I could have into the deck, but the fourth one would have come at, exp at an expense of a green source, which would leave me uncomfortable with the count of green sources in the deck. So. So I have to ask a question too about Hedron Crab and Crypt Breakers. Some people are playing like those cards in this kind of build. Why did you choose not to include those? Oh, I thought about those and discussed those cards in detail with various people. The reason why I don't like Hedron Crab is because it costs blue mana, which uh, like is probably not immediately such a turn off, but uh, it's actually really bad when you consider the further implications. Given that's a one drop, you need to cast it on turn one for it to be effective, and then like. You can, it can get real, get real bad uh, with your opening hands that will contain uh, Stitcher Supplier, Faithless Looting, and uh, Hedron Crab, and you really like there's no good way to maneuver those hands sometimes. Uh, so I don't like this card. Uh, Crypt Breaker, I'm still waiting to see it actually contribute to somebody's game plan. I have not seen this uh, happen yet, even though people kept playing it even before the ban. But I don't think this card is very effective. So I asked you before we started recording. What are your bad matchups, and uh, what did you tell me? Well, so whenever I play, like I, t I tend to play the broken decks in modern when it's possible, and uh, like one of the biggest tells to me is when I play Magic Online leagues and I keep queuing and I like you know I win, I lose some, but never do I feel the sensation of fear when my opponent plays their first land, it's, and that's the case for the with the Hogan deck. Like my opponent plays whichever like opening uh, turn in modern and I really just shrug it and know that I probably am favorite in the match overall. No fear. So. All right. Well, Hogak could be the deck of the weekend and you could be the player of the weekend with it. You certainly have a lot of experience. Piotr Glogowski with Hogak.